Hi, I'm Doug from Worship Musician Magazine and welcome to the companion video for the November-December 2016 Acoustic Treatment Column. If you're looking at this video on YouTube, the link for that column is right there. All right, one of the things as worship musicians we are really relied upon to do is to be able to create different levels of dynamics and also position how far forward or back the instrument sits. And one of the great things about the acoustic guitar is with three basic techniques, you can do that really easily. We're going to use a common chord progression toggling between finger picking, using the pick and fingers, and then using a variation of alternate picking to choose three distinct levels in dynamics that also give you the ability to choose how far back or how far forward the guitar actually sits in the mix at those three different levels. All right, now where this is valuable is this. You come up, you're the only musician on the platform playing behind a speaker. Finger picking is great because the level is quieter and the attack is not going to get in the way of the speaker. You see one of the vocalists starting to come up to the platform. By playing the bass notes with the pick, that is shifting from the finger picking to using the pick in the fingers, you're now defining very specifically where the bass note of each of these chords is. If you've ever had a singer join in out of cycle, this is one of the ways to prevent that from happening. Then as you see the rest of the band getting ready to come up, switching to being able to play all the different notes in the chord using alternate picking or a variation thereof is one of the great ways to really make the guitar get louder and forward so you just kind of give a cue to the congregation like, hey, we're about to go into worship. All right, we're going to start off working on the finger picking. The right hand technique we're going to be using for the finger picking is as follows. The thumb is going to cover the sixth and fifth strings. And if we were playing any notes on the fourth string, we cover those as well. The first, second, and third fingers are going to be on the third, second, and first strings. And they're going to be wrapped around gently underneath each one of those strings so we can pluck it as opposed to caressing it from the top. All right, taking a look at the bottom of the screen there and turning on the guitar, you're going to see the first chord is a G major six. And the plucking pattern for that is going to be six, three, two, three, one, two, three, two. Second chord is a B minor flat six, which is going to have us go five, three, two, three, one, two, three. That gets us to an E minor seven, six, three, two, three, one, two, three, two. And finally, a C major add nine, which is going to have us go five, three, two, three, one, two, three. Now, if you take a look at the string patterns for chord number one and chord number three, you're going to see they're the same. And the same thing is true for chords number two and chord number four. That's what I like to refer to as pattern recognition. And by being able to see the similarities between what we're doing on the right hand from chord to chord, in this case, chord number one and chord number three, and chord number two and chord number four, instead of having that thing where sometimes the notes are floating around our brain and we get lost, we can kind of sort them out into an order like that. All right. Now I want to go over a technique that I call the subdivision method, which is great for practicing these things up to speed. The subdivision method is, in this case, being used to get the right hand nice and tight, but it can be used for anything that maybe you're having a challenge with. If you take a look at measure one, it's written as a measure of eighth notes. We're going to play it once as written, then we're going to take that same measure and play it twice as fast, twice as many times, which basically means that if we looped measure one, playing it as it's written, that's a measure of eighth notes. Then if we played it twice as fast, twice as many times, that would give us a measure of 16th notes. And if we loop those two measures back to back, we're going to be toggling back and forth between 8th notes and 16th notes. I'm going to play that two times through. Again, 8th notes, 16th notes, 8th notes, 16th notes. And what that's going to do is going to get the right hand nice and tight, especially if you use something like my Strobo Plus HD tuner, which has a metronome built into it. All right, I'd suggest doing that for each one of these measures. 8th notes, 16th notes, 8th notes, 16th notes, and looping that preferably with time. Do that for measure 1, measure 2, measure 3, number 4. Then looping the entire thing, 8th notes, 16th notes for measure 1, 8th notes, 16th notes for measure 2, measure 3, measure 4, and looping again that whole thing with time. All right, we're going to start off with just doing that for measure 1.
using a combination of the pick and the fingers is also known as hybrid picking. And basically what we're doing here that's different from what we did with the finger picking is we're replacing where the thumb was playing on the sixth and fifth strings and the first finger was playing on the third string with the pick. For the G major six, we're going six, three, two, three, one, two, three, two, and we're now using the pick on the sixth and third strings. For the B minor flat six, we're going five, three, two, three, one, two, three. Pick is now covering the fifth and third strings. E minor seven is gonna be identical to the right hand of what we did for the G major six, so we're going six, three, two, three, one, two, three, two. And the same thing is true for the C major add nine. It's doing the same thing that we did for the B minor flat six, which is five, three, two, three, one, two, three. All right, I would suggest looping each one of these measures using the subdivision method and then looping the entire thing also using the subdivision method. This last technique is a variation on alternate picking and is based in part on something Joe Satriani taught me when I was studying with him. If I wanted to arpeggiate a three note chord like a G major triad, he showed me to go down, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, and that's how we're starting each of these chords. All right, for the G major six, we are going down, down, up, down, down, up, down, up. B minor flat six, down, down, up, down, down, up, down. E minor seven is the same thing as the G major six. Down, down, up, down, down, up, down, up. And the C major add nine is the same thing as the B minor flat six. Down, down, up, down, down, up, down. All right, as you might imagine, I'd suggest looping each one of these chords until you're nice and comfortable using the subdivision method and then doing the same thing for all the chords. Awesome. Before we start toggling between these three techniques, I want to set you up for success with some tips on the right hand. Normally I use a 0.73 millimeter Tortex pick from Dunlop for acoustic. It's the right texture and sound for what I like to hear. But it doesn't show up so great as I put it over the guitar and demonstrate what I'm going to show you how to do. So we're going to move to the green pick. All right. Now, as we toggle between holding the pick for alternate or hybrid picking to finger picking and back, there's basically four steps. One, two, three, and four. And I want to go through those in slow motion. Let's take a closer look. All right, normally when I'm alternate picking, I kind of push the pick up onto the edge of my first finger, which is slightly curled around. All right, it kind of pokes through like that. All right, the first step of going from alternate picking to finger picking is just going to have the thumb kind of bring the pick along like that along the edge of the first finger as the first finger kind of moves out of the way also using the force of gravity that pick is moving with the thumb like that and it's coming down and it's coming to rest right there that middle joint there on that middle finger so that's step one step two is that first finger comes along and kind of comes right in between the pick and the thumb there like that and now we're holding the pick in between that same joint that was holding it like that between the thumb and the middle finger. Now it's the first and second fingers that are holding that. Again, one, two. All right, now we're basically ready to finger pick. All right, so again, that's one, two. Now to get back, what we're gonna do is have the thumb come down along the edge of that first finger like that. And at the same time, that first finger kind of comes out like that. And that prepares us to bring the first finger around and under, and we're back to where we started. All right, again, one, two, three, and four. All right, I would suggest practicing that before we start toggling between the three different techniques. All right, so now that you've learned these three different right hand techniques, as well as what you need to do with the right hand to be able to switch between them, we're gonna switch between them. And my suggestion would be to go from technique number one, finger picking, to the hybrid picking, to the variation on alternate picking, back to hybrid picking, and then looping all of that. All right, thanks so much for tuning in and hanging out. I look forward to seeing you in the next issue of Worship Musician Magazine. God bless.